I'm the leader of all women, the hands to heaven by me led. So tell me why, oh creation, between the wall and door I bled. Ya Fatima Zahra, Ya Sayyidati Zahra, Ya Sayyidati Zahra. Take your time, take your time, mashallah. Mashallah, ya Sayyidati Zahra. Allah, oh people of the world, listen. I am the daughter of Ahmed. I am the rose of his vision. My name flows in the tears he sheds. I'm the leader of all women. Their hands to heaven by me led. So tell me why, oh creation, between the wall and door I bled. Ya Sayyidati Zahra. Ya Sayyidati Zahra. Ya Sayyidati Due to him, our Lord, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, may his peace and blessings be upon all the apostles, the prophets, the messengers that he sent to the humanity. And upon the seal of those messengers, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, upon him and his pure and immaculate progeny, the peace of the Lord. And may the peace of the Lord be upon you and with you, surrounding you, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Islamic calendar, we are witnessing these days the anniversary of the departure of the daughter of the Prophet of Islam. Lady Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam The beloved daughter of the Prophet The closest person to him in this life When Aisha the wife of the Prophet was asked Who is the closest person to the heart of the Prophet? She said Fatima to bint Muhammad and then when she was asked who is the closest one to him from the man's side she said Ali ibn Abi Talib those two people were the closest one to the heart of the Prophet and the Prophet did not base his emotions arbitrarily The Prophet based his emotions, his deeds, his feelings based on wisdom, based on reason. It was calculated. So he would not favor a person with no reason. He would not give preference to a person with no reason. When he says to a person, I love you, then it means a lot then it means that this person is being also beloved by God, not only the apostle of God. And if one day the prophet, peace be upon him, becomes upset with someone, it's not for a personal reason. It's not because the prophet has a prejudice against that person. It's because that person has done something, a violation, violated the rules of God because that person is against God. So when the Prophet says, Fatima tun bad'atun minni, this lady Fatima is part of me, part and parcel of my life, my heart, my existence, my being. Fatima tun bad'atun minni. Man adaha faqad adhan. Whoever hurts, this lady is hurting me. 
من أسرها فقد أسرني and if someone makes this lady happy brings happiness to her then he is making me happy he said this about Fatima عليه السلام not because Fatima is his biological daughter it's not only because of that because the Prophet peace be upon him had other biological daughters some people say there were other another two another three a total of four from the marriage of Lady Khadija with the Prophet peace be upon him some historians believe they were four there is a debate between the historians as to the number of the daughters that the Prophet had begotten. Some say two, some say three, others say four. So he never said these statements, these critical, fundamental, critical statements about other daughters. He never said this about Zainab, his daughter. And Zainab was the first daughter of the Prophet. He never said this about Umm Kulthum. He only said this about, never said this about Ruqayya, his third daughter. He only said this about his fourth daughter, Fatima to Zahra. Again, another hadith that has been narrated by almost every transmitter of hadith on both aisles, on the Shi'i aisle, and the Sunni side. He, the Prophet peace be upon him says that إن الله يرضى لرضى فاطمة ويغضب لغضبها It's not only me, the Prophet. My Lord. The Lord becomes happy for the happiness of this lady. And the Lord himself becomes angry and upset for her being upset. And this is not an emotional statement. They mean it. The Lord means this. The Prophet, he means this. Because Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon them both, symbolizes for us the role model, the ideal, the ideal lady, the ideal lady who can be a role model, who can be an example for not only women, but also men too. Lady Fatima alayhi salam epitomized the greatness, the uniqueness of a lady, the perfection of a lady who is a human being, but she ascended she ascended with her character, with her behavior, with her manners, with her sacrifice. She ascended above the level of a human being. This is why God chose her by testing her. When God tested her, put her to test, then the hadith says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَرْضَى لِرِضَى فَاطِمَةً وَيَغْضَبُ لِغَضَبِهَا Because she was put to test. And she passed these tests successfully. And therefore, she was qualified to be a role model for all the ladies of the universe. When the Prophet referred to her as being the master of the ladies, Sayyidatun Nisa al Alameen, some companions came to the Prophet. They said, Oh, the Messenger of God, then where does Mary stand. Maryam, the Holy Quran says about her, Ya Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen. Ya Maryam, iqnuti li rabbiki warka'i wa wasjudi warka'i ma'al raka'in. Where does she stand? The Prophet answered, he said, Maryam, Mary is the master of the ladies, but of her own time of her own era while Fatima alayhi salam is the master of the ladies of the universe from the beginning to the end. 
she became the master of the ladies not just for one reason being and that reason is being the daughter of the messenger of Islam it's not because of that it's because of her character because of her sacrifice her life was short most historians believe that she was killed at the age of at the age of 18 but her contribution are endless her contribution to her faith to her religion to her community to the Islamic nation to her family to her father to her husband to her children is endless endless let's take Fatima as a daughter to the Prophet the Prophet most of you know that he was married at the age of 25 to Lady Khadija alayhi salam. She was his first wife and the marriage lasted for 28 years until Khadija peace be upon him died in Mecca. And the reason Khadija died because Quraysh, the main tribe of Arabia in Mecca, they boycotted the Prophet. The Prophet was under siege for three years he was confined to a ranch in Mecca. The name of that ranch was Shi'bu Abi Talib, a ranch that was owned by Abu Talib, uh, the uncle of the Prophet. So the Prophet was confined in that ranch for three years. And Quraysh, they banned uh, any type of relationship with the Prophet in particular the social relationship and the economic relationship. As a result of that, you know, the food that they had did not last long. And as a result of starvation, two people died in one year, within a few months. Abu Talib, the defender of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And after that, the wife of the Prophet, Lady Khadija, peace be upon her. Those two died. The Prophet depended on them, relayed on them, on Abu Talib and his defense of the Prophet and Lady Khadija and her care, protection, emotionally, physically, mentally of the Prophet, peace be upon him. So when the Prophet lost Khadija, it was a big loss. It was not easy on him. Imagine Khadija was with the Prophet for 28 years, defending him, maintaining him, protecting him. She was the most loyal. Among the wives of the Prophet, Khadija stands as being the most loyal to the Prophet. And remember, the Prophet married Khadija when he had no money, when he was not even a Prophet in the beginning. Then he became a Prophet. But Khadija, she left her money, her wealth, at the disposal of the Prophet. To the extent that when Khadija died, the day she died, she did not own a shroud, a kafan. Imagine she was a millionaire in Mecca. We've been told that in Mecca there were three millionaires. One of them was Lady Khadija. She gave her wealth to the Prophet to spend it on the Muslims. Muslims, most of them lived in poverty. She did not leave anything for herself. Khadija, Lady Khadija was the only source of charity and giving and generosity for the Prophet peace be upon him. No other companion of the Prophet was able to provide him with that financial assistance except for Lady Khadija. So when she died, she had no kafan, she had no shroud. So the Prophet had a clock, something like that, aba'a. So he covered her with his clock and then he buried her. The Prophet was alone after that. He was really lonely. 
he lost two the two most important defenders the mo most two loyal friends of him were lost within a few months short period of time so the prophet where does he go then God asked the prophet now that you have no defender in Mecca your wife Khadija is dead your uncle Abu Talib is dead now I want you to leave Mecca and go to Medina travel to Medina leave the city of Mecca here there was a gap in the life of the prophet who filled that gap? Lady Fatima alayhi salam. Lady Fatima came. Ma nansakh min ayatin aw nunsiha na'ti bi khayrin minha aw mithliha alam ta'lam anna allaha ala kulli shayin qadir. The verse in the Quran states that when we abrogate a sign of God <coughs> and this sign <coughs> This ayah, it could be a verse in the Quran. So another verse comes to abrogate the earlier one and it brings a new law, a new regulation. Or it could be other than, not, not necessarily a verse in the Quran, ma nansakh min ayatin also it could, it could apply to people, to objects. So God says, when we take an object, when we take someone, we might replace him by someone else, which is equal in importance or even better. We might bring something even better or at least equal. So two friends of the Prophet, they left him, they died. Abu Talib, God replaced him with Ali ibn Abi Talib, his son. He became the new defender, the new bodyguard of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And to the female side, when Khadija died, the Prophet replaced her with her daughter, Fatima al Zahra. Again, the new heart. The Prophet needed someone who had physical might, physical ability, that was Abu Talib and after him Ali ibn Abi Talib, his son. And also he needed a heart, emotional entity, big heart, that can provide him with, <coughs> excuse me, with encouragement, with love, with attention, with care, she can shelter him emotionally. So when he lost Khadija, the Prophet, God replaced him with Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. And therefore the Prophet referred to his daughter Fatima as being Ummu Abiha. To her father, with her love, with her attention, with her sacrifice, She's like a mother. She's like a mother. The Prophet found the love that he lost when Khadija died. He found it in Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. Therefore, he called her Fatima to Ummu Abiha. Great lady. She sheltered the Prophet. The Prophet was under constant attack. One day, Fatima, in her house, and she was still in Mecca, not in Medina yet. She heard that the uh, polytheist in Mecca, they attacked her father inside the sacred mosque, Al-Masjid Al-Haram, while her father was preaching the message of Islam. He was insulted, he was physically attacked. She ran from her house at a very tender age, very young age, she ran, she came to the mosque, she embraced her father, they threw some trash on him, they physically abused him, she cleaned him, cleaned his face, his chest, and she was crying, 
She was crying hard. She said, Oh, Daddy, Ya Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, I can't stand seeing what is happening to you. The Prophet said to her, My sweetie Fatima, don't worry. God is protecting me. Yes, they can hurt me physically, but they cannot finish me. They cannot kill me. So don't worry, I'll be safe. I promise you I'll be safe. By the grace of Allah, by the protection of God, I'll be safe, Ya Fatima. And then another time in Medina, in the battle of Uhud, the Satan cried, a loud cry, Ala qad qutila Muhammad. Muhammad has been killed indeed. The Muslims who were around the Prophet, the companions, they ran away. They started climbing the mountain, Mount Uhud. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ You abandoned him, you left him, you started climbing the mountain. And Satan cried, Muhammad is killed. So many of the Muslims, they run away. They run away from the battlefield. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ In chapter 3 in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Imran, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ You go back on your heels. Suppose Muhammad dies or he get killed. You abandon religion. You leave religion. You run away from religion. أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ أَعْقَابِكُمْ وَمَنْ يَنْقَلِبْ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ فَلَنْ يَضَرَّ اللَّهَ شَيْئًا وَسَيَجْزِ اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ If you turn back on your heels and run away from religion, you are not hurting God. You are hurting your own self. And God indeed is going to reward those who are grateful, those who are steadfast, those who have strong faith. Is going to reward them. Fatima came, alayhi salam. She was in the city of Medina. And there is a distance between Medina and Uhud. So when she heard some of the companions running around, coming from the battlefield and saying, the Prophet is dead, she rushed to the battlefield herself, a young daughter, a newly wed, Fatima got married after the Battle of Badr. Between the Battle of Badr and Battle of Uhud, there was one year. During that one, one year, Fatima السلام, was married. She got married for only a few, few months. She left the house. She came running to the battlefield, searching for her father. She found him. The Prophet was wounded. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was wounded. He was a bleeding. He was a bleeding from his forehead. Fatima came, she wiped out the blood from his face, from his forehead. She said, Abata, Ya Rasulullah. My life is your ransom. I wish I can die and you stay alive. What did they do to you? Why they did this to you, Ya Rasulullah? She was comforting her father. At the time that the Muslims left the Prophet on the ground, bleeding, only seven people stayed with him. Out of a huge army, only seven people stayed with the Prophet. Six men and one lady, Um Amara. The rest, they ran away. Fatima came, giving comfort to the Prophet, hugging him, staying next to him, weeping. The Prophet found some peace. Fatima and her husband, hand in hand, 
Ali was defending the Prophet against the aggression of Quraysh because Quraysh were determined to put an end to the life of the Prophet that day. Abu Sufyan said, Muhammad is going to be murdered today. There is no way he can get away with that. Khalid ibn al-Walid, another military commander who was on the side of Quraysh on that day, he was determined to kill the Prophet. Ali ibn Abi Talib was running around the Prophet. Running around the Prophet like a butterfly, defending him. His sword was broken. He came to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna al-mar'a yuqatilu bi sayfihi wa hadha sayfi qad inkasar. I can defend you and defend my religion with my sword. My sword is broken. Immediately Jibreel comes with a brand new sword, Dhul Fiqar, Dhul Fiqar. He says, O oh, Prophet Muhammad, give this to your cousin, to your defender Ali. So he took the other sword, the new sword, and he took off to the battlefield, defending the Prophet. Ali was wounded, heavily wounded on that day, but he was also determined to protect the life of the Prophet. Ali and Fatima surrounded the Prophet. He was flanked by those both, by both of them from both sides. So Fatima as a daughter, she was the best daughter. She set the example for our daughters, the young ones. Be like Fatima. Be loyal to your family. Don't be selfish. Your father raised you. Your mother raised you. They need you. They need you to stand behind them. If something happens to your father, you have to be the first one to go and comfort him. I know a lady in North America, she has many siblings in the family, many boys and many girls. But when her parents need her, she is the first one to be there, to be there. Even before they call her name, she's there to take care of her parents. She's there to defend them. She's there to maintain them. She's there to take them to the doctor's office. She's there whenever they need something to be fixed, she's there. We have to be like that, those daughters. Fatima alayhi salam was the best child a person can deliver. She stayed loyal to her father, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you come to another dimension of her life, being the wife, being a good wife. Imam Ali Alayhi Salaam, after the death of Fatima, was in a state of grief for a long period of time, long period of time. One of his close friends comes to him one day and he says to him, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, Ya Abu al Hassan, Fatima in paradise, and you have to have patience, you have to have endurance. I see you sitting at home weeping for Fatima. Whenever you remember her, you weep. Why don't you stop this, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen? The Prophet said to him, Ya Ammar, it was Ammar ibn Yasir. The Prophet said to him, Ya Ammar, la talumni. Don't blame me. Fatima was unique. Fatima in her character, in her loyalty, in her compassion, in taking care of me, Fatima was unique. Ya Ammar, la talumni. Fatima never made me angry. Fatima sheltered me emotionally. When I come back home tired from outside, defending Islam, working for Islam, protecting Islam, Fatima would receive me with a smile on her face. I look at her face smiling. Despite the difficulties she experienced at home, she would never frown. 
She was always a smile. So don't blame me if I miss Fatima to Zahra. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Fatima was so loyal to Imam Ali alayhi salam, to her husband, that even if she had some difficulties at home, even if she had many challenges at home, part of these challenges was hunger, starvation. Not enough food to feed her kids and to feed herself. This is one of the challenges. But she never frowned in the face of Ali. She would welcome him with a smile, always a smile on her face. Her face was radiant. One of her titles is Az Zahra, لأنها كانت تزهر لعلي عليه السلام. Her face was radiant. When Ali looks at her face, he sees the beauty, he sees the peace, he sees the honor. He sees the calm in her face. She brings him, she brings him peace, tranquility, a soothing face. She never made him angry. He says, she never made me upset. She never asked me something beyond my ability, beyond what I could provide for her. So don't blame me if I sit and I miss Fatima and I weep for her departure. In her marriage, in her marriage, her marriage was an example for the marital life, for the Muslims and non-Muslims. Marriage was very modest, humble marriage. The room was very small. The furniture, very humble. But within this house, they were able to raise good family, healthy family, strong family in this house, in this little house. Not, not they only enjoyed this family themselves. Even the Prophet, whenever the Prophet looked for some joy, for some relaxation, he would go to the house of Ali and Fatima. He would go to their room. Because Ali and Fatima, they did not live for their own selves. They lived for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They dedicated their life, every minute of their life, every chapter of their life, every ju juncture of their life, was completely dedicated to serving God, to being with God. Ali and Fatima, every second of their life was for God, not for themselves. Not for themselves. This is why they were able to comfort each other, to help each other, to stand for each other, to sacrifice for each other. One day, the Prophet comes to the house of Fatima and he finds a new curtain at the door, at the main entrance. And then he looks at Fatima, there were some bracelets and some earrings. So the Prophet sat there for a few minutes and then he left. Usually he would sit longer. On, the, on that occasion, he cut short his visit. Fatima realized that her beloved father, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he noticed that his daughter is wearing some bracelets. His very young daughter, newly wed, very young, wearing some earrings and bracelets and she has a new curtain at the entrance. So she realized that the Prophet did not like this. She took out the earrings and the bracelets and the curtain. She folded it 
and she gave it to her son, Hassan alayhi salam, little boy. She said, go to your father, go to your grandfather and tell him this is at your disposal. You can do whatever you want to do with it. You can give it to the poor, to the needy. You can spend it on the Muslims. When Hassan came bearing and carrying the curtain, the curtain and the earrings and the bracelet, the Prophet looked at him from far and he said, فَعَلَتْ فِدَاهَا أَبُوهَا Three times. فَعَلَتْ فِدَاهَا أَبُوهَا فَعَلَتْ فِدَاهَا أَبُوهَا She did it. May her father be her ransom. She did it. May her father be her ransom. He mentioned that three times. And then he said this. He said, مَا لِآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَالدُّنْيَا مَا لِآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَالدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّهُمْ قَدْ خُلِقُوا لِلْآخِرَةِ فَإِنَّهُمْ قَدْ خُلِقُوا لِلْآخِرَةِ What does Muhammad and his family do with the dunya? They have no connection to the dunya. They are not enchanted by this dunya. They are not obsessed by this dunya. They have been designed for the akhirah. They have been created for the akhirah. They have no relationship with this dunya. The Prophet here was setting an example. He did not want to deprive his daughter from some ornaments or attraction because she's still young. And what she was wearing, it was a gift from a lady given to the daughter of the Prophet. The Prophet wanted to send a message through Fatima to Zahra to the rest of the women in the community that your focus should not be on the dunya, the attraction of the dunya. Work for the akhirah. If you have something, some money, some jewelry, try to comfort others with the money that you have. Try to donate it. Share it at least with others. Don't think in, uh, in terms of materialism. Nowadays, we have many people who, who think that happiness is based on a diamond ring. If they have that diamond ring for $50,000, then they are happy. If they don't have it, they are unhappy. And this is wrong. This is wrong. The Prophet was trying to teach his daughter Fatima that I don't want you to cling to materialism to anything, even the simplest one. Because the attraction, the spiritual, moral, ethical attraction that you have is much more bigger than these small items that you are wearing. I want you to be a good example for the rest of the women that they should not focus. Their focus should not be on the dunya. And since Fatima is a role model, then she has to sacrifice. She has to be the first one to sacrifice the attraction of the dunya. We will continue, inshallah, with you for the next two days or maybe three, three days on the heritage and the legacy of Lady As-Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Until we see you again, I leave you in the protection of God. May Allah bless you all. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahli baytah al tayyibin al tahirin. My name flows in the tears he sheds. I'm the leader of all women. Their hands to heaven by me led. So tell me why, O oh creation, between the wall and door I bled. Ya Fatima to Zahra, Ya Sayyidati Zahra, Ya Sayyidati Zahra. Take your time, take your time, mashallah, mashallah, Ya Sayyidati Zahra. 
Allah, how people of the world listen. I am the daughter of Ahmed. I am the rose of his vision. My name flows in the tears he sheds. I am the leader of all women. Their hands to heaven by me led. So tell me why, oh creation, between the wall and or I bled. Ya Sayyidati Zahra. Ya Sayyidati Zahra. MashaAllah, Ya Sayyidati.